laugh, but it never works out <laughs> that way. So guys, today we do have a handout. It is Cornell Notes, and it's all about measurement because tomorrow the Special Olympics will take place, and we want to be very, very proficient in measuring and converting. Let's get started. About some things that we just must know. Now listen, if you miss a class, I want to invite you guys to watch the videos. corlin has been nice enough to actually post all these videos online on a blog that she's developed along with two other students later in the day. So if you ever forget something or need some type of refreshment, refreshing, not refreshments, let me know. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh. And for all my loyal YouTube fans, we're winning it back tomorrow. That was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> if your parents ever watch this, they're going to be fired. <laughs> all right. We've all heard of King Henry, and we know that he died Monday drinking chocolate milk, right? That's a little mnemonic device we're going to use a lot this year. So write this down. I believe it's also in your handout. King Henry died. Now notice the first part to the left-hand side is always in capitals because these are big units. Now we come to our base units. I'm going to make a really big M. This is kind of like home base. So King Henry died Monday, lower cases now because these are very small measurements, drinking chocolate milk. What do they stand for? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is millimeter, this is centimeter, and this is decimeter. Now a millimeter is basically the width of your eyelash. Yes, ma'am. You know, I think that one actually is the fourth one, fifth one down. But if you need more space, you know, Peyton, wherever you need it, right? I, I was meaning the King Henry guys. Yeah, that doesn't fit very neatly in the mnemonic device portion of this, does it? So the summary would be a great spot, so you oh. could fit it all in. Okay. Did I say too much or confuse you? No, I was just wondering if that was... I think you're good, right? Yeah. Check it out, guys. So then we go to the base units. Can anybody in the front row tell me what the base units are? There's only two of you. Anna, you know any of the base units? In, like, European countries, if you were to take your body mass, how much would you weigh? What kind of, like, unit would you use? Kilograms. Yeah, you said kilograms, right? You ever watch the Olympics? When I first started watching the Olympics years ago, I'd watch wrestling, freestyle wrestling or Greco-Roman wrestling. And I was like, man, those guys only weigh 80 kilos? They must be midgets, or really small. Then I turned on the TV after I watched the, you know, the brochure, and I was like, oh, these guys are like 180 pounds because one kilo is 2.2 pounds. That's actually a pretty good number. These are not small guys. Another question you might see on a quiz is this. Mr. O'Connell weighs 200 pounds. He's going to wrestle a guy that only weighs 100 kilograms. Who has the advantage in weight? Yeah, because one kilo is 2.2 pounds. So he weighs 220, I weigh 200 pounds, and that's a big body weight difference, especially in wrestling. So here we go. We've got our base units, which are, oh, what are they? Grams, liters, and meters. So you have mass, you have distance, and you have, I'm sorry, you have volume and you have distance. Okay, this is DECA. This is what I call my good friend HECTA, H-E-C-T-A. And we got kilo. And you're very familiar with kilograms and kilometers. Anybody ever run a 5K race? You know, that's about 3.1 miles or so. It's far enough. That's what I always say. The big D is deca. Yep. And these are all really small, so that's why they're lowercase. Yes, ma'am. Can you move forward? Oh, absolutely. Please do. Yeah. And so we have these measurements. Now, one of the key skills we're trying to become proficient in is, number one, going from a measurement in, like, centimeters and converting it to kilometers or something like that, and then going this way and then going that direction. And it seems difficult at first, but I think a lot of you guys already know how to do this. And then we'll convert from English units to SI units, which will be our lab tomorrow outside. So it's really pretty basic. You guys will do awesome, I'm convinced. Let's just jump right in. But quickly, I need to add this. It's not in your notes, and I neglected to put it in there, but it's very important. Here it is. Metric units. Yeah, write this somewhere. I forgot to put it on there. Our base 
on the number. And can somebody in the back back row finish my sentence? What number are metric units based on? I'll give you a hint. Ends with a zero. Zero. And begins with one. Ten. You guys are brilliant. Yeah. They're based on the unit, or they're based on the number ten. Think about it. You know, you're moving a decimal over the whole time. You got tens place, hundreds place, thousands place. Those are all multipliers of ten. Nod your head, yes. So this is on your test next Friday. By the way, there is a test next Friday. Quiz this Friday. Test next Friday. And on your test Friday, you guys are certainly welcome to bring 20 note cards, and you'll get five bonus points. You can do that early and leave them here with me. Just do them. They're such a good help uh, for you guys. Uh, you still get five points. There are five you do, points. Yeah, there are five points for doing the assignment. And it's bonus points. So it's really the only bonus points work you get in this class also. Let's do a couple examples here. How about, mm, we'll start with 56.3 centimeters. That's the first one of your Cornell notes. I have 56.3 centimeters, and hey, listen, I am supposed to convert that to millimeters. The first thing I do is I glance up at my little scale here, my mnemonic device. And I put my hand where I start. Boom. Next, I need to put my hand where I end, which is right here. I am going from left to right, so I'm going to make an arrow this direction. That arrow is the direction that the decimal moves. So that basically says this decimal is going in this direction. Just call it what it is. So we're going to go from our starting point to our end point. I'm going to count one. The decimal goes over one spot. And our new number is 563 millimeters. Pretty easy, isn't it? Who knew that already? Yeah, you learn this in like eighth grade usually, but some kids never grasp the concept, so we have to cover it. Can I erase this? Mm -hmm. All right. Right now, I want you to turn to your partner and tell them what number SI units are based on. Don't be afraid. And I guess like a herd of cows. <laughs> okay. So that being said, let me throw out some random numbers. These are not your Cornell notes, but I want to teach them to you. Anybody know Coach J? He's like this massive beast guy from the junior high school, right? Or oh, whatever, yeah. Great guy. I like him a lot. Let's say Coach J goes running one morning. He's like, hey, guess what, Mr. O'Connell? I just ran five million. 678,002 millimeters this morning after I drank six gallons of orange juice and ate three grown heifers, all right? So, should I be impressed? Well, when we run, what, what measurements do we use typically? Okay, how about SI units? Kilometers, right? Or if it's like sprinting meters. Correct? So we could, let's do it to kilometers. Are you ready? So we're going to go from millimeters all the way to kilometers. So that decimal place is going to be traveling. Where is the decimal? Somebody in the side rows? Oh, I'm right side of the city. Yeah, it's right there. Listen, I'm 38 years old. But what if I was like 38 years old and one month old? I would call it 38.08, you know, something like that. There's always a decimal at the end of every number. Agree? Okay, just remember that because some people forget it. Okay, now what direction am I going to go? I'm going from millimeters to this direction. So point that way. We're going to go to the left. All the way left. Now watch carefully. I'm going to show you a little trick. Keep your decimal. Just write it in there. Put your hand on where you start, where you want to end, and then put your finger on every unit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That means you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So Coach J ran 5.678002 kilometers. So he basically ran a little bit more than a 5K race. That's pretty impressive, I think. Anybody can run 3.1 miles is doing pretty good. So he ran about five, and I'll do that, about 5.7 miles, or kilometers. 
Was that pretty easy for you guys? Mm -hmm. Double check, make sure I'm making mistakes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do another example. Are you ready? What if uh, I went fishing and I like to fish? I like to fish out here. Okay, just one person. Okay, well, you should try fishing. It's fun. Two people. Okay, let's say I go to the Cabot Community Pond. You ever been there? Yeah. Not really like America's number one fishing destination. Let's be honest with ourselves. They do have some really weird looking ducks though. You know what I'm talking about, right? The one with, like the red warty head that like looks like it's a beagle. Chase me. Yeah, he chases you. Okay. So I'm out fishing at the Cabot Community Pond, and I catch a flathead catfish. And I pull it out of the water, and I don't have anything to weigh it on. Fortunately, Mrs. Tharp, our chemistry teacher, happens to be walking by with a digital scale. She's a nerd like that. And she weighs it in, let's see, in centigrams. So using that. And when she weighs it, it is... 276 centigrams and I am pumped right that's a that's a good big number so I'm excited and then she walks off so I remember 276 this is centigrams how many kilos does this weigh because you want to weigh fish in kilos a kilo is 2.2 pounds hmm. so my decimal is right here and I'm starting right here and I want to get to here so all I do is count one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So really, my fish is 0 0.00276 kilograms. How about how long do you think a fish like that would look when you measure it? Eh, maybe like microscopic? I don't know. It's pretty stinking small. Let's convert this into English units so we can actually digest this number. For that, I'll need my calculator. Come on. Oh, is it not working? Okay. Forget my calculator. I'll use my phone. We know that there are 2.2 pounds in one kilogram, right? So what order of operation do I use to solve this? Are you going to multiply it, divide it? So, what's the order of operation? What do I start with? Don't be afraid to be wrong. Ana, what do you think? Let's do 2.2 times the kilograms and then divide by 1. Okay, so 2.2 divided by 0 0.00276 equals... Mm, that gives me 797 pounds. I said times. Oh, you said times. That would be really an awesome number. I'd have the world record fly catfish. Which, by the way, I think the world record is just shy of 100 pounds. So what should I do instead? Just multiply. multiply. 0 0.00276 times 2.2. Okay, this fish weighs exactly 0 0.006 pounds. So... You know, you, you know, a pound is kind of not very heavy, right? This is like my eyelash. Okay, not really a catch to be bragging about. World record, I call it World record dreams are dashed. Hey, I've caught feathers. Wall hanger, right? You just kind of put a little speck of pollen on your wall. That's it. So yeah, not an impressive number at all, but that's how it works. Let's take a look at those cornells again. Mm, let's see. Okay, let's, let's talk about calculating percent error. And on our handout, it's kind of like two-thirds of the way down. This is how you calculate percent error. And here's the formula. You have actual, your actual measurement. And then you have one on the bottom. I'm sorry, I take that back. I lied. Sorry. No, that's right. What should go in the denominator? Your estimated value, right? Yeah. Okay. And these little lines mean what? Yeah. Absolute value. So your number will always be positive. Mm -hmm. So if you have things kind of juxtaposed, they come out negative, just call them positive. You don't have negative error. That would be kind of unusual. 
let's do an example. Let's say we are measuring, I don't know, Randy, can I use you as an example? We're going to measure your foot, all right? We're not actually going to do it, but we're going to pretend we did. So we measure his foot. What size shoe do you wear? 13. So your foot is probably about 12.7 inches, and we're not going to do metric units right now, but what we do is we estimate it was 15 inches, correct? And we just divide that, we get some kind of number, which I guess I'll calculate for you guys. Clear that. So we got 12.7 divided by 15 equals times 100. And I end up with 84.7%. Accurate. So I really was pretty accurate overall. So tomorrow, that's part of the operation you'll do for that experiment. Is that the answer to what for his foot? Okay, yeah, so yeah. That's just a random number I pulled out too. Okay. So and I'll walk you through it tomorrow. It's really simple once you've done one example. Okay. Um, probably pause that, guys.